So if you are like me and a lot of other guitar players out there, and if you've been playing for any extended amount of time, you're probably curious about vintage guitars. For a long time, I thought vintage guitars was gonna be a nightmare to get into. You don't know what you're getting. You could be getting someone else's junk. You could be getting something that's not reliable. You could be getting something that's just so expensive you can't afford to buy one. Now, I always wanted to buy a vintage guitar, but I can never afford one, especially the ones that I wanted. When I started doing some research, I found that there is cheaper ones. You could go with something like a Junior, or a Les Paul Special, or even like a 70s Strat, something along those lines. There is an alternative, and people kind of forget about this brand when it comes to vintage guitars. I don't see them that often when I see people playing or talking about vintage guitars. The brand I'm talking about is, of course, Epiphone. I encourage every one of you who is considering spending this kind of money on a guitar, do your own research. I am in no way, shape, or form a vintage guitar expert. I was looking for something different than my humbucking guitars. I was looking for something like a Strat or a Telecaster, just to kind of expand my palette in the studio when recording. I looked at a bunch of Strats, I looked at a bunch of Tellys, I was gonna go Fender, I was gonna go Sir, Tom Anderson, all the other brands, Nash, but I really didn't find anything that spoke to me. Usually when I buy guitars, I know what I want and I know that I want it. This guitar immediately caught my eye. I actually had been dealing with the guy on Reverb for about four months trying to haggle him down and when I noticed that it was still sitting after a while, I made him a decent competitive offer and he decided to take it. This guitar is a 1965 early 66 Epiphone Olympic. The reason I have it dated around that time is the body is dated late 65 and all the pot dates and codes on the potentiometers are early 66. Some of you may know this already, but Gibson purchased Epiphone in 1957. That being said, these earlier Epiphones were made in the Kalamazoo plant. These are American made Epiphone. Gibson and Epiphone in the past year have gotten into producing American made Epiphones again. Epiphone had a very rich history before they were taken over by Gibson. This guitar was made in 1965 in the Kalamazoo plant in Michigan. It's a one piece mahogany body, one piece mahogany neck, and a true Brazilian rosewood fretboard with all the good attributes of this guitar, American made, vintage, looks cool. It's still a big risk. It was still a big risk to buy this guitar. You don't really know what you're getting on reverb. Unfortunately, that's kind of the way buying, selling, and trading guitars has gone over the last couple of years. But I took the risk and I couldn't be more happier. This guitar exceeded every expectation. I honestly didn't even take it for a setup yet because it's fine. I changed the strings. The stop tailpiece is rock solid. It is an aftermarket stop tailpiece, but the buyer included all the original pieces with it. It's supposed to have a tremolo on it that was included. The original pickup was included. He did swap it out for a Melody Maker Custom Shop Seymour Duncan pickup, which is fantastic. Gets rid of the 60 cycle hum and it sounds really good too. Down the road, I might switch back and put the original pickup in there just to kind of see how it sounds because I'm curious. For right now, this guitar is rock solid. It's bang on. The intonation's great. It's light as a feather. It's almost under six pounds, which is crazy. And it's extremely resonant. These old guitars, after sitting around and drying out for so long, all the moisture is basically out of the wood and they are extremely resonant. We'll do the Paul Reed Smith test. See, super resonant. The only thing I have considered changing after living with the guitar for about a week is I might get some repro tuners because I don't want the plastic on the tuning pegs to break and the high E tuner it's a little wonky, but nothing too crazy. It stays in tune fine. So thus far, my experience with my first vintage guitar has been almost flawless. It was packed well. It came with all the original pieces, no headstock breaks. I don't want to jinx it, but it's 
been great so far. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to tune in next time. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Every little bit counts. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any experience with vintage guitars and anything you'd like to see me do next. Take care.